You guys are going to have to bear with me. The garage is a freaking mess, man. It's... I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. Just look at this. I have to... I can't even... I can't even swap the transmission out on the Raptor because it's... It's gone from sinking into the mud to repaired with a bad, tra bad transmission to now re-abandoned so that we can build this Banshee. But it's okay. I, <laughs> I have the new transmission right here. Brand new, pre-owned. It's an 04. The whole damn thing is in there. Shift fork, shift drum, the whole thing. So we'll get that thing repaired uh, <laughs> one of these days. I've just been focused on the Banshee because there's stuff all over the place. Like I don't want to tear that down with all these parts all over. Like, oh my gosh, look at all these bolts. Can you believe this? This is new to me, man. These, these, are, these are not new bolts, but you might think they were. I was back and forth between whether or not I should do another stainless steel bolt kit. That's usually what I do. Stainless steel bolt kits are great. The only thing with those is you're gonna lose the OEM look. And uh, sometimes, I'll actually show you, I've got, these are all my leftovers from different kits, but typically these bigger bolts, they don't quite match perfectly because you've got these special bolts like these where there's a step down. I got a ton of those done. Uh, but ones like that, you're not gonna get that in a universal bolt kit, or even if it's a specific bolt kit. Uh, those stainless steel bolt kits are nice, but they don't have special bolts like that. So a lot of times I end up reusing the OEM hardware anyways, and I really like OEM hardware. I think it's, I think it's pretty much the best that you can do. In most cases, you know, if we're talking about like the engine on the Banshee, a lot of Yamaha engine hardware is Phillips heads, uh, soft metal, and a lot of times they, they strip out, I don't like those. But in most, in most cases though, OEM hardware is very good. So since I wanted to go for that OEM look, I put up a poll on Instagram and a number of people recommended Motoblast. So Motoblast is a company that's very close to me. It's about an hour from me, really worked out perfectly. I uh, called him up, his name is James, the owner, and I kind of told him what I was doing and everything. It was pretty interesting. Um, <laughs> it was funny, he actually recommend, he, uh, recognized my voice on the phone and who I was uh, without even me, me even telling me. That's the first time that's ever happened. But, uh, pretty awesome, and it's just cool to do business with somebody that actually watches my videos. Uh, so I, I, I just like that whole aspect of it. And plus, man, just look at this work. He did a great job. I wish that I had uh, taken some videos when these were all dirty and rusty because I had put these in the tumbler and cleaned them up a little bit because I was actually going to coat them myself just with regular paint. Uh, but the before and after is still pretty drastic. You can see, you can see they're bare. There's a couple rusty and dirty ones in there. But James literally takes these, he vapor blasts each individual bolt, which takes a ton of time. Then he hangs them on wire and he dunks them in an electroplating tank and he will do black zinc, blue zinc, which is like a silver look, and then the traditional yellow zinc. Now I'm no master when it comes to electroplating, but I do know that with pretty much any kind of coating or plating, prep is where it matters. So this is a brand new bolt straight from Yamaha. And this is the coating that you'll get from the factory. Now, if you have an older machine and even some of the newer ones, you'll have, it's kind of like, it's called olive drab. It's like a greenish color, but this is actual black zinc. Uh, I don't know if Yamaha switched to that or, you know, it depends on the bolt or whatever, but this is black zinc from the Yamaha factory. And you can see there are some mild imperfections. They're not perfect. From what I understand, you can actually, you can coat these in a different way by tumbling them. I believe in a barrel. Uh, don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. If you guys are in that industry, you know, you can let me know in the comment section below. But when you hang it the way that James does and individually vapor blast and clean each bolt, you get a more consistent finish. If you look at the tops, you can see this one's just a little bit nicer. And I would imagine these, this is going to last a little bit longer even than OEM. So I really like helping out companies that are really putting the extra time into their product and making sure the customers are happy. So uh, I have no problem giving a recommendation for Motoblast. If you guys are looking to get anything restored bolt wise or get your cases vapor blasted, uh, just from the quality of work, you know, I saw his shop, I met James, the owner, and I saw the quality, I see the quality of work that he does. Uh, there's just no doubt the guy really cares about what he's doing. All the parts came in plastic baggies individually uh, separated and stuff. I kind of just gave him like a huge box of bolts and he sent them back. And guys, I'm like literally tripping out right now. Looking at these things from this angle is like the back of one of those cereal boxes with like a hologram on it. So if I pass out, uh, that's why. But yeah, on top of that, it is a really good service and he generally charges about $2 per bolt. It's going to depend, you know, like a swing arm bolt is probably gonna be, you know, a couple dollars more. You can also get small parts done. I've got like my, uh, my chain adjusters, some headlight spacers and stuff like that. It doesn't just have to be bolts, but when you consider the cost of OEM hardware, if you're gonna buy all this stuff new, uh, there's like 350 pieces here. Some of these bolts are, no joke, they're $20 a piece. 
you know, this is probably, if you were to buy all this hardware new, I don't really know. I'm just gonna say 1,500 bucks, maybe $2,000. It, it would not be cheap, <laughs> I'll put it to you that way. So if you're looking to have anything vapor blasted as small as some nuts and bolts all the way up to full-size car transmissions, or if you're looking to have zinc plating done on your bolts and some other small hardware, make sure to give Moto Blast a call. You can reach them on the internet at njvaporblast.com. You can also find them on Instagram at moto underscore blast. All right, guys, let's get into the video. Now, at first glance, this might still look really messy, but I spent a lot of time getting all the ASPCA Raptor stuff out of here and organizing the parts to the best of my ability. They do look kind of, it, it doesn't look great right now, but if you uh, look closely in these boxes, everything is set and ready to go. As soon as the frame gets here and as soon as the cylinders get here, we're ready to start rocking and rolling and get this banshee together. Now, I also have stuff over here this is where I have all the engine stuff. I've got our cases ready to rock and roll. We're gonna be doing some case boarding on these as soon as the cylinders get here. We've got our 115 millimeter, four mil stroker crank. That is a welded and trued crank, so we should be rock solid right there. The transmission, one of the few pieces that are actually here from the donor machine, because uh, if you guys watch this series, a lot of stuff has been replaced. Uh, but that's the transmission that came out. Everything looks really good. We've got our V-Force reeds, our larger carb boots. Uh, you notice we got a crossover here. I've actually got this blocked off because this is really just made to mimic and look more stock, but we're actually, there's no function to that piece. Uh, we've got our motor mounts. We've got our lockup clutch. We've got our clutch cover from Driveline Performance. I have one of those on the Voodoo Banshee. I think they're one of my favorite lockup clutch covers for the Banshee, I think it looks the most OEM, but it still has that trick appearance. It's pretty freaking sweet. I'm gonna give you guys a quick look into these boxes. They are somewhat organized. You can see I've got the headlights all done. They're in there. If you guys didn't see the last video, those are completely custom LEDs. This box just kind of has odds and ends. We've got um, cables, brake lines, the carburetors are in there, our Hermosi thumb throttle, uh, some graphics are in here. Uh, over here we have all the silver stuff. Well, for the most part, anyways, we've got our Alba uh, extended A-arms. I already have all the bushings and everything in them. I netted up our Nerf bars. Those came out freaking awesome. Our bumper, uh, suspension from Rocket Ron. It's just everything's ready to rock and roll and, and go together, pre-assembled as much as I possibly could. We have the first ever white uh, Banshee DRW belly skid. That should look really nice with the silver frame. Uh, kind of be like a little bit incognito. We've got a rear skid plate, uh, swing arm. It's all got all our bearings and everything in there. A mod quad chain slider on there, ready to rock and roll. The uh, carrier, uh, I think that might be in here, but the carrier, I have that packed. Our um, the new bearings are in there and I did uh, pack the bearings. We've got our heel guards here. Our tank is all cleaned up and check this out. We've got a dual pingle. It's not a pingle. It's a it's a, a replica or a different style. I haven't tried that style yet, but it looked more OEM. That's why I chose that one. And then I've got a really nice seat cover that I put on here and check it out. On the back, I've got Yamaha. So that's all custom. The uh, seat color is called Seafoam and hopefully that'll match really nice. Now you may or may not have noticed, but there was this giant ass box here in the corner. These are the Vito's plastics. I hope so anyways, because <laughs> I mean, there's tape all over it that says Vito's performance products and it's a big ass box. So I can't imagine anything else being in there. These should be the 1992 replica plastics. I'm dying to see what these things look like, man. We have the, uh, the covers that we painted and stuff. I think they came out really good. I'm really curious to see how the color will compare um, by comparison. I would imagine that the Vito's ones are going to be you know, as close as possible to OEM color. I, I'm done talking, let's let's open it up, man. I've been, this has been sitting in the garage and uh, I've been dying to open this up. All right, here we go, product spotlight. This is exactly how it comes. I'm assuming the entire set is in here, front, rear, and tank guard. Uh, I did not open this at all. I wanted to do this with you guys. If you saw earlier this year, I did a plastic comparison video where I took eBay plastics, eBay slash Amazon, and uh, then I took OEM, Meyer, and I had some UFO plastics. The only brand, well, there's a couple other brands too, um, but uh, Vito's was one of the ones that I didn't have. And uh, they were like, dude, you gotta, you gotta show our plastics. You gotta show how they fit. So we're probably not gonna fit them up in this video because we, we, we need the frame for that. But we're, we're gonna get an idea of what they look like and how they come. So this is a full set. Do not use knife to open plastic inside. It's very nice that they put that there actually. You know, I could imagine people just kind of go tearing into these things sometimes and then it's like, oh, 
my plastics are destroyed. Now because that's there, I'm, I'm gonna use the knife. Sorry, Vito's, uh, but I'm just gonna be really careful, you know, since they have that there, I think that's the whole point. I'm just gonna kinda go in a slant so the blade isn't facing downward, and I think we'll be okay. Oh, I got the plastics. Nah, just kidding. Ooh, so these are the tank covers. Hoping I can give you guys a good view of how these are. It's got the stickers, dude. Vito's is winning, man. I don't know how, how closely they watch my videos, if they know that I like stickers, but that's points right there. So these are the tank covers. They come nicely wrapped. Oh, man. Man, does that look nice. We've got our rubbers for the tank. Very nice, man. Well, I mean, it appears to be OEM quality. I'm looking at the radiator fins. I know on the Chinese one, the uh, the grill really wasn't bad, but you could see molding marks on the plastic mesh. This pretty much looks like OEM quality. Here are the tank covers and radiators next to each other. These are the painted ones and these are the vetoes. Oh man, I wish I had a brand new OEM one so that I could really know what the color's like because I mean, these are reproductions, the vetoes ones. They look beautiful, but uh, I don't know if the, if the color is 100% accurate. They certainly look like the 92 color theme, but I don't know. I think that I just went a little bit too teal. We might have to recover the seat. I'm not really sure, but you can see the comparison there. All right, let's move along here. More stickers? Points, 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 points. Well, I will say for packaging, they did a really good job of putting all the plastics in a relatively small box. And it's, it's packaged much nicer than the Chinese ones were. We've got foam wrap, bubble wrap around the plastics and a bag. This is definitely nice wrapping, in my opinion. I would say this is comparable, if not better, than OEM. Oh man, new plastics are just, it really is a privilege just to be able to open these. As a kid, I never had new plastics. And then all of a sudden, like, like this year, I've had <laughs> several sets of new plastics. It's pretty cool, honestly. I've got really nice sharp edges. Yeah, these are definitely nicer than the China plastics or eBay, Amazon plastics. I can tell without even mount. I mean, they could, maybe they won't mount up at all, but I, I really just doubt that. I see really nice square sharp edges. They just appear to be very nice. They're heavy. They don't feel chintzy. The warning labels are very reminiscent of OEM Yamaha. They appear to be very nice. And here's our rear. Same as the front, wrapping wise. Yeah, same story here. Uh, the Chinese ones, now that I've actually had my hands on a number of different brand plastics, they were kind of like warpy out of the box. So they, I thought that they would mount up and straighten up, but they didn't. Uh, but these don't have that like warp to them. They're nice and straight, very similar to the OEM plastics. So I'm gonna guess that these are gonna have OEM fit. They look very nice. Give you guys a closer look at these beautiful plastics. They really do look great. I will note the color on the screen appears to be more like a blue, whereas in person, it's teal. It's really, I don't want to say really different, but it's 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 definitely a different shade. So unless you see this thing in person, you really can't tell exactly what the color is. And I think that's why I had so much trouble matching up this teal color. Now these are the very first run from Vito's Performance. So these might be kind of like a prototype. I'm not sure if they're going to come with graphics or not. A couple things I did want to note though, uh, you're not going to get the little uh, pinch bolts that go on the tank. These ones right here, I have brand new OEM ones. I had ordered these just in case. And also, you're gonna have to rivet together the two tank halves. And then there's a little piece of foam that goes on the underside, this right here. So just uh, something to be aware of. It does not come with that. At least my set didn't, like I said, 
Uh, this is one of the very first ones that came off the line, so this might be kind of like a prototype. Maybe uh, when you order it, that will be an option. Same thing with graphics. The other thing is, these are the new style warning labels. So from what I understand, um, I don't know when they switched it over, but something up until like 1999, they didn't have these placards where the warning labels are actually raised up. They were just flush on the plastic, and I don't think they were riveted either. So what I'm going to do in an attempt to make it look at least more similar to the original 1992 is I'm going to take these off, the placards actually remove, and then I'm going to re-rivet these warning labels flush to the plastic, and that'll give it more of a genuine look for that time period. So for now, these get thumbs up. I think they're going to fit great, but we're going to have to hold off and when the frame gets here, we'll actually test the fitment. But just the way that the tank cover fits into the, uh, the lower uh, front plastics and everything, I can tell that these are going to have better fit than the Amazon eBay plastics. And like I said, I think it's going to be very close to OEM. We'll address these warning labels once they're mounted up on the quad because I think it's a little bit easier to drill these out and stuff when they're actually firmly mounted to something. All right, so we got the plastics on lock. We're going to have to figure out that seat cover. Maybe I can get a different shade. I'll figure it out, though. But we got the call from Bonehead Performance Coatings and the powder coating is done. I already went and picked it up. Check it out, man. I got them done in blackjack and it looks awesome. Very close to the OEM color. Now I had originally planned to get the Wampus cylinders. The Wampus cylinders look just like OEM cylinders. So it's kind of like a stealth look. And since we're kind of doing the resto mod thing, I thought that would be neat. However, those cylinders were on back order and realistically, it's not really that much of a different look than a stock Banshee cylinder. You know, it's a little bit more blocky up here and everything, but the port design is exactly the same. We're still gonna get the great performance and everything. And really, like I said, it just looks great. Bonehead Performance always does an awesome job coating all my stuff. They know exactly where to mask off. Has a very durable finish. They do a great job over there. CP Industries hooked up the cylinders. Really looks great. Use the OEM hardware up here, trying to keep it looking somewhat stealth, somewhat original. You know, we gotta do at least a little bit of stuff, OEM. Now we do have some work to do on these cylinders. I like to do a cleanup port, basically just going in here and cleaning up any roughness. If you see like up here, this little piece of cast, I can uh, grind that off. Just make sure everything is smooth. Just have to be a little bit careful because these are plated cylinders. Also, I wanna go in the exhaust and I can polish that up. I'm not gonna make it like a mirror polish, but I can smooth it out and make it a little bit nicer. And then I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna open up our transfer ports. I have our gasket. I'm gonna put this in place. And the gasket is actually, it's almost perfect, but it's just slightly larger than the ports. So I'm gonna mark those off and we'll make the ports the exact size of the gasket. And then once I've done that, I'm gonna take the gasket and put it on our upper case half. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna match up our cases so that they're the same exact size where the transfer ports meet up. And you can see there's a good bit of material that I'm gonna to have to take out to make them match up. That's gonna create better flow and we're gonna get better performance. Engines are all about flow, man. The more air you can get flowing through them and fuel, the more power you're gonna make. And you can see using the base gasket is a really nice template. That and a Sharpie gives us exactly where we need to cut out. Really hard to mess that up. Now I'll take this with our two dowels, flip it over and put it on the cylinder. And we'll do the same thing with this. Make sure that everything is exactly the same. All right, so looks like very little has to come off of the cylinders. This side, practically nothing. That's not surprising though, because this is a performance piece and these are standard cases. So you can see how much we're gonna have to take out of here, but that shelf right there would definitely prevent optimum airflow. So by opening these up to match these ports, that's the whole idea, getting nice, smooth flow. So there's nothing more to do but to put on my headphones, listen to some death metal and get to grinding.
All right, so there it is. You can see how much we opened those up. It's not even close. Made sure to keep a nice taper on these. That should give a really nice flow. Put our gasket on there, and you can see all of these made up perfectly. Came out really good. You guys did a good job. Cylinder I didn't go crazy with. You can see I smoothed out the exhaust. Just tried to get rid of any seams, imperfections and stuff. Smoothed out the ports, opened them up. And then I came in here and just did a little bit of touch up, but I really didn't do too much with the transfers. It always surprises me though, just how much material comes off. Even when I just do a clean up port, it's pretty crazy. I'll show you guys in here from under the cylinders. This is the whole point of that. You can see this is the case. This is the cylinder and that right there, that little gap, th that was way off before. There used to be a big shelf. Now it's nice and smooth. And the whole idea is for better uh, flow of air and fuel. Now case porting on a Banshee can be good for a couple horsepower. And I think when you go into something like this, like an aftermarket cylinder, or if you've got even heavily ported stock cylinders, that's when you really see the biggest return on investment with case porting because they're just so drastically different and there's so much for the stock cylinders, there's not a, not as restrictive, but once you start getting into bigger cylinders and aftermarket stuff like CPI, the case porting, the way that it comes from the factory just becomes really restrictive. So I think we should see some really big gains from this. All right, well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm about ready to assemble this thing. So if you guys are looking for a full Banshee engine tutorial, I do have one of those up when I built the Voodoo Banshee earlier this year. I will have a link to that in the description below. Uh, as for this one, I'm gonna fly through this and I'll probably stop along the way to show you some of the mods. Before I get to putting my Yama Bond on these case halves and buttoning this up, I do wanna give a huge shout out to Rocky Mountain ATV. Dot com. Those guys literally are my number one go-to shop when it comes to OEM parts and also to aftermarket parts. We've got a four millimeter stroker crankshaft here from Hot Rods. This came right from Rocky Mountain ATV. Huge thank you to those guys for sending this out. But you can get your performance parts and you can also get your OEM stuff right from Rocky Mountain. And also we've got our Maxima assembly lube. We've got all our Loctite, our anti-seize, uh, waterproof grease and stuff like that. It all comes from RockyMountainATV.com. Those guys are a huge help and I could not do any of this stuff without them. So without further ado, let's get these cases together. All right, here we go. I already got my shift drum and shift forks in there. I like to put my case sealer on before I even put my studs in place. It just is easier to put on beforehand. And the uh, all that stuff goes in really quick. You just gotta move fairly quick before this stuff dries. But really, you can get away with letting this stuff sit for, I've let it sit for like 20 minutes before and it's been just fine. All right, now we'll get our studs in. These are all refinished by Moto Blast. These look like brand new. The service manual tells you to put red Loctite on these, but I actually anti-seize them. I've never had an issue doing that. And then when it comes time to remove them, they come out way easier. Put a little bit of anti-seize on our dowels and drop them into place. Don't want to forget the dowels. Then we'll drop our trans in place. I'm gonna make sure you've got those little crescents in there. And our crank. Just drop this bad boy into place. All right, now we're gonna put this bad boy up on blocks so that the studs can hang through. If you put, if you do it on the bench, uh, the case, the top case half will get held up. All right, last minute check. We've got our dowels, we've got our crank, crank seals, primary drive gear, both uh, transmission shafts, all our shift forks are in place. Our clips are on our shift fork shafts. I think we're good to go, man. We're all studded up on top. We are good to go. This should drop right in place. Nice. All right, and I've got all new OEM hardware here. This is another one of those things. It's good to have all this stuff ready beforehand. 
so your case sealant doesn't dry up on you. And I'm going to pull all of these down in a random crisscross pattern. Some of them I'll have to pull back out because there's little, uh, little stays and stuff that go on here, like for the clutch rod arm, but you can pull those back out later. I just want to get the cases pulled together so that our sealant sets. We've got the nuts on the bottom. I'm going to do the same thing, just kind of snug these down in a crisscross pattern. And then I'm going to make sure that we have no binding in the crank or the transmission. And as long as we're good there, then I can torque these down and the center cases are done. For the most part. Well, it looks like the cases pulled together completely. I don't see any weird gaps or anything. All right, crank is nice and smooth. And transmission is nice and smooth. Let's go to torque. I'm actually fixing to put the cylinders on right now. So I'm gonna throw the pistons on in a second. I want to stop and show you these. So I've got these all studded up. I've got some stainless steel studs in here. Now these, if you've never worked with a cub before, you're probably like, dude, what, what, what the crap is that? The first time I saw these, uh, they came in a kit and I was, I honestly had no idea. But these are stud extenders. Now on a traditional cylinder, you can see on these mounting portions in the back here, the one side is low and the other side is tall. That's why you have these tall studs in the middle and the low ones on the outside. So on the back of a cub cylinder, you can see it's tall in these middle portions, but it's also tall on the outside portions. So that's what these stud extenders were designed for. These were uh, actually designed by the creator of CP Industries, Calvin, and they will thread right on top of your existing stud and boom, you've got a long enough stud now. And this wider portion here, you don't have to worry about the gaskets accommodating that. If you have a gasket that's made for a cub, it's already gonna be, it'll come with the space to accommodate that. The cylinder will slide right over. Uh, just a nice clean design. You could swap out the studs if you wanted and just put longer studs on the outside too, but uh, I'm gonna use the extenders. And we'll tighten these up using the same method as any stud with the double knot technique. Beautiful. These head studs from CPI are probably the nicest that I've ever seen. We've got the little Allen hole at the top. Really nice stainless steel. Put some ANSCs on these. I wanted to stop to thank you for making it this far into the video. If you love Banshees and you can't wait for the next video, make sure to check out the Voodoo Banshee I built under the playlist, Building the Ultimate Trail Banshee, Voodoo Banshee. I'd also like to take a moment to thank the companies that are helping to make this project possible. Thank you to Rocky Mountain ATV, Rocket Run Suspension, Hermosi Throttles, Power Sports Nation, DRW, Moto Blast, Bonehead Performance, and CPI. These are all companies that I trust and most of them I use on a regular basis. Any applicable promo codes and links to their websites will be in the description below. If you're enjoying the video so far, looking for a way to help out, giving the video a thumbs up, leaving a comment below, or subscribing to the channel all help out a ton. Products and tools in the video are listed in the description below, and purchasing from those links does help me out a lot. I get a small kickback from that, and there's no extra cost to you. Basket Case Garage t-shirts with the ASPCA Raptor on the front are now available. The link will be in the description below. Grab your shirt now and let everybody know that you helped save sport quads. And if you're looking to support the channel even further, there is the option to join. All channel members get guaranteed responses to their YouTube comments. All right, guys, I am done talking. Let's get back to the video. All right, I'll finish up the top end later. I'm waiting for my domes to come in the mail. So uh, I want to show you guys what I'm doing with the shifting setup. So we're going to do some uh, shifting mods here. Uh, if you know about Banshees, they're, they're not really the best, not well known for shifting and stuff. So I've got a couple things here that are going to help out. Oh, actually, I have one more right here. Uh, and all of this stuff is going to help with shifting. My other Banshee, the Voodoo Banshee, shifts pretty nicely. I've done all of these mods. We're going to do the same ones on this one. So the first and foremost, this is a pretty com common one. It is the Shift Star mod. So for the life of me, I can't find the stock one. I wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison, but uh, I'll just explain it. So you see how this one uh, Shift Star, the point is real pointy right here. On the stock one, they're all pointy. And when you're, this will attach to the end of your shift drum, and it spins like that. And then you've got a shift detent right here. And then as this rolls, 
the shift detent goes into these grooves. So if there's a big spike there, there's more of a peak for the shift detent to overcome. And sometimes that can make for difficult shifting. So uh, the modified ones like this one, you can see they're rounded. So it just makes it a lot easier for the, the detent to go over that as opposed to something like this. That's really peaky. You gotta put a lot of energy into that. A lot of times you have missed shifts and stuff. So um, I have a video actually showing how to modify the OEM shift star. It's essentially the same thing, just ground down. Or you can buy these. These are really cheap. They're, they're like 20 bucks on eBay. And uh, the other thing is the detent itself. The traditional one does not have a roller bearing on here. You can see this has got a little bearing. That's just going to make it same thing as I was explaining before. It just helps it roll a little bit easier on the shift star. So all, we can, all the help we can get is going to help. It's going to be good with the, with the Yamaha Banshee. And then the other mod that I do is with the shift shaft. By the way, this is a, another, a new shift shaft. If you guys remember, I had to grind off the shifter. And uh, yeah, the old shifter was no, no longer usable. I mean, I guess you could use it, but uh, just not a good idea. So PSN actually hooked this one up. This is a used one that they sent me. So I appreciate that. But what we're gonna do is open up this little shift window right here. I have another video showing how to do that as well, but uh, we'll do it because it's really quick. All right, so we got the shifter and the vise here. First thing we're gonna do is take the spring off in the back. Get that out of the way. Now here is our little pin. That's gonna be, it'll go up and down like this. Well, this, this actually goes up and down, but that's the motion that it'll have. So what we're gonna do is just take little half moon out of each side. And honestly, guys, I don't even measure this. Um, <laughs> I guess you probably should, but I kind of do it by eye. And I'll just do like a little kind of half moon. And I'll use this burr right here. It's about the same size as the post. And you'll see, we'll just put a little half moon in there. You don't want to go too close to the edge. And when I put this together, I'll show you the action and you'll see what I'm talking about. You get a longer throw. All right, right about like that should be good. I'm just gonna do the same thing to the other side. All right, now we'll slide our bushing and spring back in place. And this is good to go. You don't really want to go much further than that because you get any thinner, you might have some reliability issues, but this is pretty thick steel. That will not break. All right, let's get the shift shaft in there. All right, now I've got a shifter on the other side so I can move this up and down. And uh, normally these little catches are gonna go on the shift star. I have it pulled out just a little bit because it'll be easier to move this. But you can see when you move this, Normally it would stop right about there. And because we've ground that section out, it gives you just a little bit more throw. And that can help you out with shifting a little bit. Same thing with this way, it would normally stop right about there. Gives you just a little bit more. Easy mod. Got a brand new kicker gear. This was from PSN. If you guys remember the one that came out, was trashed. Same thing with our idler gear. Uh, whoever, I put it on before, either didn't put the clip on or it had fallen off at some point in time and the gear was just kind of floating around in the back and smacking all over the place. Test our kicker out, make sure it functions. Looks good. All right, we got some more goodies. We got a billet basket. This is a generic brand. I'm gonna give it a shot. It looks like it's a replica of a chariot. It fits really nice. I replaced the uh, OEM basket. Um, PSN Parts had sent me a new primary drive gear and a used basket, so I just swapped out the basket for this billet one. The primary drive gear is really what came in key. The one that came off, it had just seen better days, man. It was like it was like a worn out shoe, man. Like the gears had actually gotten, the teeth were like thinning out. So I mean, just maybe could have reused it for like a stock banshee, but. You know, we're going to be pushing like 80 horsepower with this, which for a Banshee really isn't that much, but uh, it's definitely the type of performance that you could start breaking teeth off and stuff. So why even risk it, man? The center hub is also a replacement. The takeoff was toasted. Again, thank you to PSN Parts. PSN really hooked it up with a lot of good used takeoff parts from some Banshees they uh, tore down. This inner hub clutch holding tool is seriously the best. I can't believe I ever used to not use it. Mm. 
it seriously just makes doing stuff like this so easy. All right, we're gonna loop up our clutch plates with AMS oil, 10 weight 50 dirt bike oil. It's pretty much what I use in all my bikes at this point. It works great, don't have any problems with it. Uh, using a Wiseco clutch kit. And uh, we're gonna be using a lockup from Direct Drive. And we'll be using factory springs. I've got six OEM clutch springs, brand new. The whole idea is the OEM springs are nice and soft, easy on your hand. So you can get a lot of play in before the end of the day because you know you got really tight uh, clutch springs and you know your hand gets all tired and stuff and that's no fun man so the whole idea is make this thing comfortable to ride but still get really good performance out of the clutch paper plate method this is the bomb man just puts a get it get yourself a paper plate put your oil of choice in there dunk the plates and just start alternating one at a time it gets just enough oil on the fibers, it's clean. And then just toss out the plate when you're done. All right, now for some more goodies. We've got our pancake bearing. This is a modification, pretty common. Put another washer on here. And we've got the actual pancake bearing. A little bit of assembly lube on it. We've got our pressure plate. This is a brand new pre-owned. Another one from PSN. You want to make sure that's sitting nice and flush and contacting your pressure plate. And there's a jam nut that goes on top here. I don't usually adjust these on the bench. I usually do it once I have my cable and stuff on there. So for now, I just kind of guesstimated. Got our brand new OEM springs. We don't need tight springs because we'll have the lockup. That's going to hold the power. These things are really easy to install. They literally just go right over top of your springs. And uh, you just wanna make sure that these weights are not outward because they can get stuck behind as you're tightening it down. And there's two reasons why you would have a lockup, in my opinion anyways. One is that you've just got excessive power and you literally need it to get all the power to the ground. And two, it's like our case where we could probably get away with a normal clutch, but it would be really tight uh, and really a tight clutch pull. So this is gonna give us easy clutch pull and we'll still have the strength of a really strong clutch pack or essentially the, uh, the lockup is gonna do what the really strong clutch springs would do. These are all getting tightened down to 7.4 foot pounds. And now we've got this freaking menacing cover from Direct Drive CNC. Man, that looks freaking awesome. Got the uh, water pump cover. This is uh, zinc coated by Moto Blast. New hardware in there, new gasket. Got the uh, water pump already in there, the impeller and whatnot. Got the, uh, I had two of these made when I made the Voodoo Banshee, one in smoke and one in green. So I figured this is a, uh, a good outlet to use that smoke cover. Does it look stock? Absolutely not. Well, sort of. I even painted all of the hardware flat black to try to make it as incognito as possible, but I mean, see-through clutch cover. It's kind of a giveaway, a little bit, but is it badass? Absolutely, this is definitely, on the scale of badassery, this is like, uh, we'll give it a nine out of 10. We, always, we, we, gotta, we gotta leave some room for improvement, you know what I mean? But this thing is gonna look freaking sweet. Maybe at first glance, you wouldn't think that it's uh, aftermarket, I don't know. I don't even care, dude, it looks great. Oh man, that looks freaking sweet. These direct drive covers are cool because they do have like an OEM shape to them. If it wasn't for the actual, it, you could almost mistake this for an OEM cover uh, that is modified, but it's actually, the entire thing is aftermarket. It's reinforced in the kicker area. The whole cover is different. Uh, there's not um, a vent tube here, which is kind of ugly. Those The vent tube that comes out and then runs outside of the case. There's also a, uh, a rubber bushing in the OEM one. That's not on this. They just kind of got rid of some of the like clunky, unnecessary stuff. And do you believe they had the audacity to design this gasket to strategically block my signature? What the f man? Hopefully I can get in here and just slice it away. Razor blade for the win, man.
Man, this thing looks ridiculously good. I am really, really happy with the way that this thing is coming out. It just looks so clean. I, I'm just really, really happy. <laughs> I think the black hardware was a must. I was really back and forth on just doing the stainless hardware. Like, is it really gonna make that much of a difference? But I think the black hardware really gives it that stealth look. And I mean, really, these cylinders don't look that far. They're not like shouting in your face that they're aftermarket. I think you could get it past some people, but man, it just looks so good. All right, let's hop back on the top end. I'm just gonna go ahead and put these old domes in for right now. These are 24 cc domes. I don't know that I'm gonna run it with that. This is gonna be a pump gas setup, um, but I probably, I don't know what domes I'm gonna be running. I have a whole bunch of them coming in, but I wanna get this thing together and just see what it looks like, get it finished up. And I'm gonna be, you know, I'll, I can, I'll be tuning and testing and stuff with different stuff anyways. I like to see where the compression sits uh, with different size domes anyways. Let's get them on there. All right, let's get this bad boy on. Man, the CP head with the OEM nuts and whatnot on there, that actually does look pretty stock. So I'm liking the way that that looks. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our V-Force 4 reeds on. And we've got Moose intake boots. These are for, I think it's 33 to 35 millimeter carbs. We're running 35s, so these are gonna be perfect. Uh, something I wanted to note, uh, if you guys remember on the Voodoo Banshee, I think I used UPP boots and they didn't match up quite you know, perfectly. These ones though, these ones match up really nicely. I don't have to do any modifying to these whatsoever. The other ones, I had to actually shave the reeds and the intake boot. I don't know if that's something maybe they fixed along the route because I was using older V-Force 4s. I don't know, but these uh, I'm not gonna have to modify, which is, it's a, it's a good break. These do not need Yama Bond or anything. A lot of guys put sealant on these. As long as you have good smooth surfaces, that is not necessary. And these boots and reeds are available on RockyMountainATV.com. I will have these linked in the description below. And you guys didn't actually think I was gonna run a crossover, did you? Hell no. I've got this blocked off. This is a brand new OEM one. And I just filled this up with Yama Bond, probably up to about there. I didn't do the whole thing. And uh, it's just gonna give it more of an OEM look. I thought that would be cool. But it's not functional. It's not necessary for this build. It does look OG though. I, I actually kind of like it. All right, we're damn near done here. All we've got to do is the stator side. Now here is our stator. This is the takeoff. If you guys saw me the, uh, during the teardown video, uh, it was like dirty and I didn't like the way it looked, but I cleaned it up and it actually looks really good. It tests out uh, perfectly fine. I did replace the backing plate. This is a cast um, adjustable stator plate. You can see it has the slotted holes. And it's got the numbers there from zero to 10 um, on advancing and zero to 10 on retarding the time. So really cheap mod. The only thing is uh, this, uh, this, these wires have seen better days. You can see somebody repaired this. This was all uh, taped up. It looked like crap. And the wire ends look like trash too. Luckily, South Texas Banshee actually sells this pigtail. So I'm gonna re be replacing that whole pigtail. I have that in the mail. Um, for now, I'm just gonna get it on there just so that we can complete the engine and get some, some cool bench shots. But uh, this whole uh, wire harness thing right here, <laughs> that's gonna be replaced. By the way, if you guys are looking for any wiring stuff, uh, South Texas Banshee is where it's at. Uh, just about any wiring that you want for Banshees, you can get it from South Texas Banshee. Put that in place and you can see with the slots, you can turn it. And normally I put blue Loctite on these. Oh shit. Normally I put blue Loctite on these, but since I'm probably gonna be taking this back off to replace the pigtail, uh, I'm not gonna bother. And then the way you adjust this is on the stator plate, your numbers here, you wanna line it up with the seam in the case and that's how you adjust your timing. So if you set it to right there, that is zero degrees, so that would be stock. I'm gonna be setting this to plus four. So set it right there. The uh, plus four mark is right at that uh, seam. We'll snug this down. And again, I would normally use uh, blue Loctite on these and probably torque them to 7.4 foot pounds. But since, like I said, we're taking this back down, uh, just gonna leave it there for now. I put a little bit of anti-seize on our tapered shaft. I probably should have done this before I put the stator on there, but that's okay. I like to do this because if you've ever had a flywheel get stuck on your tapered shaft, 
It's usually not that hard to get off, but it, it just makes us a little bit easier. Got our shaft key, same thing. I put a little bit of anti-seize on there. Got a brand new pre-owned OEM uh, flywheel. But what, but I feel like I'm just constantly saying like, uh, the, the part that came off was no good. It was, it was uh, you could hear it rattling. But anyways, uh, that, this came from PSN. Again, thank you to those guys. Did you know that there are people that take aftermarket flywheels and then uh, they either vapor blast them or sand blast them because that's kind of like the finish that OEM looks like. Because the aftermarket ones have the, uh, I think it's a zinc, it's like a yellow zinc coating. They'll actually sand blast them to make them look like OEM and then sell them saying that they're OEM. So just uh, something to keep in mind. Oh, you know what I should have done is I should have just done the anisees in here. Sometimes I don't know about me. What the hell's going on with this? This is weird. Hmm. I don't know what the fuck's going on with this. Let's try switching out the key. What the fuck is going on here? Key is getting stuck in the keyway. See this key? It'll start. Oh shit. This key will start. And then right about there it gets stuck. You gotta be really careful with this because this is meant to have a really tight tolerance. There's probably just a little shard or something that's holding it up. There we go. Now it's nice and smooth. It didn't take much. There we go. I don't think I've ever had so much trouble putting a flywheel on. And this will just get the blast. Usually it gets red Loctite too. But since that's coming off anyways. All right, now I just realized there's two plugs that go here in the case. I would have thought that that came with the case halves, but I guess not. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. But since I'm taking this stuff off, it's, uh, I'll just figure it out later. But <laughs> anyways, uh, this is a billet aluminum uh, shift drum cap. The plastic ones I think are junk. They crack a lot, I've noticed. And uh, I put some grease on the O-ring. Kind of ease it in there, you don't want to shear it off. I put our sprocket in place. I usually don't tighten these down until uh, the quad's actually together with the chain on there anyways. Just spin this nut in place. And we've got our DRWK saver. You guys know me, I don't put any bike together without a DRWK saver. If DRW makes it, it's going on there. These, I've already saved my S, specifically with a Banshee. It's a form-fitting case saver. You can see how it fits in the actual case. If you have one of these, you will never get case whack. These things are indestructible. Uh, they come with a lifetime warranty. They're just, they are the way to go, man. These are the through bolts I was talking about. They go right through that billet. Um, little block off. And last but not least, I've got a brand new OEM stator cover. Got the rubber gasket on the back. This just pops in place. You can use this with a DRWK saver, but you do have to cut this portion off. I have the piece right here that I cut off. You just take a Sawzall, get that right off of there. I think this is actually like a chintzy form of a chase or a case saver from the factory. All right, man, I think we, we've pretty much done it, guys. I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting pretty tired here and uh, hungry. I think a little bit of food would definitely help. So I'm gonna button this cover up, put the shifter on, and uh, I'm gonna get a little something to eat here. Freaking starving. Man, I'll tell you what, there's nothing like a half-eaten cheeseburger, a pound and a half of chicken, a cup of rice, a brownie, and a bowl of cereal to make you feel better. <laughs> that sounds ridiculous when I say that, but uh, it definitely hit the spot. So this is my favorite part. Let's, uh, let's throw the pipes on there and the carburetors and just see what it looks like. This is, uh, I feel like this is an obligation, man. This really is my favorite part though, because you get to see all your hard work laid out in front of you. I really like to see the way an engine looks on the bench. It's kind of cool. It's like a piece of artwork. So we got the FMF fatties. Um, we had gold series. Uh, that's what came on this machine. And uh, Gold Series are not bad, but the Fatty was developed afterwards. 
and I think it's just a better pipe and it's not just speculation. Uh, I've run these pipes before, but uh, not just from seat of the pants, but you guys know my buddy, uh, Dave Moore and I talk a lot and uh, I try to learn a lot from him. And um, we talked about dyno results and stuff uh, when he used to run these and do uh, testing on a lot of Banshees. And he said the fatties were great for making down low torque uh, against a lot of other pipes too, not just um, the Gold Series. So this should be a really good pipe. Oh man, this is freaking tight. <sighs> oh God, that hurt. Oh, damn. I just stabbed myself. Well, somehow I got this spring puller stuck in me, but I guess these, uh, these springs are not gonna work on this. I gotta find some different springs. Oh man, that's tough. There's blood on the table. This is rough. And now we've got our carbs. These are 35 millimeter PWKs. These came from DTR Racing in Salem, Oregon. Matt hooked it up. Uh, what's cool about DTR is if you call them up, you can talk to Matt and um, he'll set your carb up. So if you tell him what your mods are and everything, he'll set your carbs up and send them to you so that they're probably close. I'm, I'm sure you might have to do a little bit of dialing in, but um, he's pretty good, man. He can probably hook it up. And then we got to put the pod filters on, even though we're not running pod filters, just to complete the bench look. Oh, yeah. Now you can't tell me after watching that that you don't want to build yourself a Banshee engine. Shit, I just got done building one and I want to build one already. Well, not really. <laughs> I need at least a little bit of a break. But really, I am super happy with this thing, man. I'm pretty proud of this, I'm not gonna lie. I think this is gonna be the most um, purposeful or the one that, the build that makes the most sense, at least Banshee-wise, that I've done so far. You know, before it's always been that I wanted to try a certain pipe uh, because I just thought it was really cool or you know, I, maybe I didn't, I, I either wanted to try something or I couldn't afford uh, really what I should have been getting. And I think uh, this time, pretty much I have this exactly set up the way that if I was gonna make a Banshee for like competition or something, like this is the way that I would set it up. I think this is gonna have a, a really good amount of low end torque. It's gonna be really rideable and it's gonna be, you know, probably 80 plus horsepower. We're gonna run it on pump gas. That makes it easier. It's gonna be easy to start. The whole idea is, you know, something that's just enjoyable to throw your leg over and ride. And it's also going to be really fun to ride and you can ride it competitively, hopefully. You know, we'll see how it comes out, but I'm happy with this, man. You guys let me know in the comments section below what you think of this build. You think it's going to look somewhat stealth with the flat black pipes and stuff in the uh, 1992 Resto mod? I don't know, but I appreciate you guys watching. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, please give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you want to see more videos like this one, if you're looking to support the channel even further, there is the option to join. All channel members get guaranteed responses to their comments. I will see you guys in the next video. The frame should be back from Powder Coat and uh, we'll be building this bad boy and uh, maybe we'll even be ripping it in the next video. Peace out.